So let me start off this video by explaining the commissioning process that we've experienced so far. It may seem long and drawn out at home, but that's mostly because I haven't been that um, uh, proactive about getting the videos out there. We have a lot of new things that we're dealing with and, you know, moving aboard and all that kind of stuff. So sorry, but you guys are kind of coming second. The other issue is that it is freezing cold in Annapolis, which which prevents some of the commissioning options from being completed and the boat also needs to get pulled out of the water. And so what we did was we made an arrangement with Atlantic Cruising Yachts to s finish, you know, critical things in Annapolis that they needed to do and also get the boat ready to sail down to Florida to warmer weather where they have another office and they can continue completing the commissioning pro progress there instead of letting the boat just sit in Annapolis until spring shows up. The issue with that is that we plan to sail it down to Florida in freezing cold weather so there are certain things that we want to get completed. Um, you know all the wiring has to be done so that we can have maybe like a space heater going um, because the heat pumps won't work for the uh, heating system because the water temperature is too cold in Annapolis. So that's just kind of some of the things that we're dealing with here. So we're kind of in the last couple weeks before we get out of here. So now comes the critical part in that for people that don't understand sailing, anytime you're sailing and the boat is moving through the water, it's just like a car or any other vehicle. Someone must be at the helm station, the steering wheel to be driving continuously. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, or however long you're sailing. If you're crossing an ocean for weeks, someone must be at the home station maintaining watch and, and you know, to ensure a safe passage. So to reduce the stress on John Michael and I, we brought on two additional crew members. And one of them is a captain that also delivers boats and has a schedule to keep. And so he was able to fit us into the sched to his schedule, I should say, and so now we have a date that we need to leave by for him and Atlanta Cruising Yachts is working on getting all our stuff done. So tonight we drove down from Pittsburgh to take a look at the progress because we are driving down next weekend with a U-Haul truck and all our belongings to move aboard and set sail a few days later for Florida. So you can kind of understand why John Michael's a little fired up in this video. All right, it is freezing out there. It's like negative 10 degrees Celsius. This is not the weather to be doing this in, but we have about 10 days left before we're supposed to set sail to Fort Lauderdale. And you can see this place is still pretty well torn apart. Atlantic Cruising House has been working a lot. You can see our punch lists up on the wall. Um, we've been visiting about once a week, but there is still a ton to do. The electronics are still not done. This is our battery control system. It's not even wired in. The grill is not supposed to be here. It's supposed to be outside. We came with these little tiny legs. You know, I have to bend over to grill. So we got to get custom legs made out of that that they're working on. Oh, the freezer is not in yet. That is right there. Over here is our dive compressor. This needs to be mounted outside. Um, this is this power panel, which is our main 240 volt panel, is not right. We don't want this to. This needs to be mounted flush. Came designed a custom table for the back here to get our microwave up, which we'd have room to put some stuff in. That's underway, but still not finished. It needs some more work done. We have a custom salon table that's getting finished. Which isn't even installed. These are the upgraded aluminum davits from Saba. I mean, from Fountain Pajot, they're here, but they're not installed yet. These are gonna be complicated. There's an entire electro hydraulic system needs to get installed for that. Our salon table is still being polyurethaned, or what is that called? You're allowed to talk on this video. Uh. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, shellac. No. <laughs> Resin. <laughs> no, it's uh, painted. It's called Wait, varnished. Right? Varnished? <laughs> Matte varnished? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Go, go up to the helm station. The bimini is partially done. You can see the surround. We got over here. All of these gauges put back in. That's not done. These mechanical controls are getting swapped out for 
blend denning electronic unit. None of that's completed. Um, we have, we did get the courtesy lights put in. But we have a water maker that we can't use because it's winterized. There is a laundry list of things to do in 10 days. Uh, they might get it done. I do not have very high hopes that that'll be the case. Um, they have been very friendly and uh, you know, we have made some changes, but I thought it would have been further along. We haven't seen it in two weeks and it's uh, still just kind of a giant mess at the moment. So uh, fingers crossed, but uh, you know, I'm not optimistic that it's gonna be ready to go. And our captain has a delivery after the one, uh, the one that we're supposed to be doing with him. So if we miss that, we don't know where that's going to put us as far as getting down into warmer weather. Um, a little bit nerve wracking, but you know, what can you do at this point? enclosed 360 degrees so it comes from the factory with just the rooftop and they install this eyes and glass and all the zippers they did great with all the details split the zippers between between the railings with a, a window here to unzip and eyes and glass door as well as little eyes and glass things to roll it up. The Bimini top is a factory option and the eyes and glass around was done by ACY. You'll need this for preventing wind burn and sailing in the rain. If you've ever been on the receiving end of a rainstorm in a motorcycle, you'll know the stinging pain I'm talking about. It's also good to keep the wind from streaking your mascara. Save those tears for the sobering moment you sign a boat loan. Great visibility. The yellow tape is where the Helm MFDs will be placed, AKA multi-function displays for the stupid people out there. Just kidding, I had to Google that shit. We're having them placed on wedges to angle them upwards, which really helps with the visibility when at the helm. For a brief moment here, you can see the additional electric winch button we had installed at knee level to keep the hands free when working sheets, but also prevent toe stubs by ones we've seen in the helm station floor. In the cockpit, we've been slowly accumulating an all-you-can-drink buffet of miscellaneous fluids and jerry cans. I'm not exactly sure what they are, but one looks just like a moonshine I had in Montana once, although I don't really remember. Jermichael ensures me that these push-button hydraulic davits lifting 100 kilograms or 220 pounds per davit are absolutely necessary, which might be true since he bought an absolutely necessary 12-foot tender. Before boating, we used to waste all our money on cars and motorcycles, so I can't complain about spending money on a 25-horsepower EFI Yamaha outboard. There's still no compressor in here, although this obviously doesn't need to be installed prior to heading to Florida. In case you didn't pick up on this, we're new to all things related to water and boating. However, on my resume, I've completed several of the online courses necessary for a swimming pool dive, with personal references including Scuba Steve. Besides, my social awkwardness predisposes me to failed attempts at walking in scuba fins, so I'm sure I'll get there eventually. 
For now, just enjoy these close-up shots because I really don't know much about this contraption or what the hell I'm talking about. Along the port window of the boat, a 900 watt, 0.9 cubic foot Kenmore microwave has been bolted down and plugged into an outlet placed next to it. I researched many options here within the limitations of watts and dimension, more than I care to admit. It seems only a few years ago I was doing shots of ballers and porn stars at bars. Now I'm researching microwaves and reminding my son to put his boogers in a Kleenex. Anyways, on to more crazy things in my life like this shelf. It's custom built, letting sunlight into the lower shelf, but not taking up too much of the window views. Since we were going to be live boards, we needed more storage. By we, I mean I, since I am responsible for organization, cooking, cleaning, provisioning, healthcare, emergency services, float plan drawings, harbor research, docking, hosting, half a homeschooling, overall naysayer to two boys. Anyways, these fans are cool too. They have three speeds as well as a built-in timer so they can automatically shut off to save battery power. This is one of six thermostats on the boat. We're anxious to see how it does as a heat pump, although the seawater has to be above 40 degrees Fahrenheit for it to work, or 4.4 Celsius if JM's listening. The water in Annapolis is currently much lower, which forecasts a cold maiden voyage. And for all you knob and tube nerds out there, here's a quick look at the 120 volt panel. We've already done a few modifications to this since moving aboard that we'll get into later. I'll give you one hint. Make sure this panel is recessed if it's placed here or you'll hit your GD elbow every time. Down in the starboard hull, the Splendid washer dry unit has been installed and I'm sure I'll have more to complain about later. Here, the carbon monoxide detector is always ready to notify you that you're about to become Sleeping Beauty. The Spectra water maker is also installed, but you probably don't care, so we'll skip that. On to the man cave. In this four peak, we're building a counter to use this area as a workshop. We optioned two non working LED strip lights. Seems like they're working as spec. While we do plan to be live aboards, we are not going to be floating around along the U.S. coast. We have the ultimate goal of circumnavigation, but plan to take baby steps starting with the Caribbean, then on to the northern coast of South America. We hope to continue broadcasting this journey, but we'll see how far we can make it before our primitive instincts take over, triggering a spiral that always ends in cannibalism and piracy, at least from what I've seen on TV. In the starboard aft cabin, the 6AC unit has been installed, and you can see the rat's nest of wiring to the 120 volt panel. Talk about tangible anxiety, here it is folks. This reminds me of some scene from a John McTiernan diehard where you have to decide which wire to cut. F that noise, anyone who's a certified electrician like Bruce Willis knows it's the green wire. Down below here, you can see that the hull has officially consumed our electrician, leaving behind a burnout lantern. To the left, a bunch of electronics I still can't explain. Not much has changed in this starboard aft cabin, but you get a glimpse of the fuel shutoff valves. Let's hope this is the last time I'll ever need to see them. Like all Irish goodbyes, enjoy this shot and maybe your last view of the fiberglass hull. The TV screen has a plexiglass cover currently covered with a paper protective film to block my black belt level skill for destroying all things electronics. We had it wired to the Bose surround sound for the Xbox and movies, along with Chromecast to stream video. JM now states the TV will be used only for good, such as educational programming and 24-hour monitoring of weather systems. I trust him like I trust my nine-year-old son. This Iridium Go is a satellite modem for sending and receiving basic weather and messaging data. The transfer rate is slow and plans can be expensive. Behold, the Victron Panel Color GX, God to monitor all things batteries, but still not installed. The Spectre Catalina 340Z control panel finally made it to the table. Welcome, my life-sustaining friend. 
Under the nav desk is still a mess of mystery to me. The white antenna on the left is the bad boy router, which will allow us to leave all our wireless devices such as iPad phones or PCs logged on to the bad boy. And when we pick up a Wi-Fi signal, the bad boy will log on giving all our devices access to the internet without having to assign each one in individually. But more about problems with that later. This thin flat messenger tape is very useful on a boat when combined with free child labor like we have. It can be used to run wiring, cords, and ropes through tight spaces in the hull or up masts. The port hull work is slowly being finished with the panels being put back together, leaving a trail of broken white screw cover caps. Make sure you buy these in bulk if you ever plan on working on your boat, or if you think you might accidentally touch the panel covers, or if you might think about the panels. In the master cabin, the TV has been installed on a stiff swing arm, which is not the least bit critical to the mission of getting the boat to Florida, but hey, every battle won counts. On the wall below is a 110 volt outlet, two USB outlets, and an HDMI plug. We've already found this desk and ottoman in the master cabin to be much more useful than a couch for getting work done. And shut your trap about the time it took to get this shit video out. We've been busy. Spoiler alert, we shove off in the next episode, despite a glitch preventing our heaters from working on the boat. Watch as we close our eyes and make a run at it.